In today's video, we're going to take a brief look at some of the practical aspects of power supply decoupling and filtering. What we'll learn is that uh, the size and placement of the various capacitors on a circuit board is largely driven by these various roles of, uh, that these capacitors perform. Large value capacitors like these big electrolytic capacitors uh, essentially form kind of charge storage reservoirs and do the bulk of the filtering for you know, large relatively low frequency current demands of the rest of the board. While the smaller uh, surface mount capacitors are placed uh, very close to various active devices form a different role. They also provide uh, local charge storage but not nearly as much charge as uh, the uh, bulk uh, electrolytic capacitance. But more important what they provide is a return path for high speed signal currents. So the high speed signal currents that might be flowing out of a pin are going to flow back through the ground plane and ultimately have to get back to the power supply. And they typically get back through these locally placed higher frequency dec decoupling caps. I'm going to attempt to illustrate this on a more simplified board. Now here's the simplified mock-up board that I'm going to use to uh, illustrate the various roles that these capacitors play. I've got 3.3 volt power supply coming in running along a power supply rail which could essentially be a, a trace on a circuit board running up to in this case a uh, an inverter chip that's running as an oscillator and then driving a 50 ohm transmission line into a termination here and that transmission line is uh, sitting over a ground plane now right now there is no power supply filtering on this at all which is uh, never a good idea but this is where we're going to start I'm probing the output of the uh, the pulse that we're generating here and this is going to generate about a 3 volt pulse so result in about a 60 milliamp current draw when the pulse is on and a much lower current draw when the uh, when the pulse is off and we're going to also probe the power supply pin uh, right at our active device so we can see the effect of filtering right at the power supply pin okay so the first thing we'll do is take a look at the effect of the bulk capacitance on the low frequency content of the noise in the power supply in order to see that I'm going to zoom in a little bit on that uh, power supply. A better way to do that is to set up an offset that's equal to the power supply voltage. And that will allow me to uh, set up a better vertical scale, uh, say maybe 100 millivolts of division or 50 millivolts of division, to actually see that noise a little bit better. So we can actually see that when we're driving the, the uh, transmission line, we're pulling an extra 60 milliamps through the supply, and that's causing a little bit of a dip in the supply voltage, and then it releases back up again. So if we place this uh, bulk capacitor right near the power entry point to this board, we'd see we've uh, collapsed that uh, low frequency noise down to just about nothing, maybe a tenth of a division. If I move that uh, bulk decoupling cap closer to my active device, it's basically about the same. It's marginally better, but it's basically about the same. And the reason for that is that this low frequency content um, really is uh, very insensitive to this placement. Uh, because the, as far as the low frequencies are concerned, all of these points are virtually identical. Uh, they are essentially at the ground plane. There's no change in impedance between those various points. So typically you'll have these bulk decoupling caps right at the power supply or the power entry point to the board because the placement isn't that critical. So let's actually solder this in place and then take a look at the effect of the high frequency component. Okay, with our bulk capacitor in place, let's uh, change our vertical scale here so that I can now see the extent of the high frequency noise associated with the edges of our waveform. And we'll take a look at uh, the placement of the high frequency decoupling cap and how the, the location of this on the board will affect uh, how well it works in reducing that noise. Okay, let's start off by placing this uh, one and a half nanofarad uh, capacitor right near the power entry point and you can see a, a relatively small reduction in that high frequency noise. If I pull that cap off you can see it grew about uh, two tenths of a division there and then reduced again. But now let's place that same capacitor very close to the chip. And we can see a very dramatic change in that high frequency noise. Uh, so and this is uh, essentially why we've got these capacitors located very, very close to uh, the devices to get rid of that high frequency noise locally. Okay, so we've got the both capacitors in place here now. Now let's talk about how the roles of these two capacitors differ. 
As we mentioned earlier, the large bulk capacitance is taking care of the large low frequency current demands and uh, on the power supply and helping to stiffen the power supply rail in that case. But the, uh, the high frequency cap here uh, is kind of forming a little bit of a different role. It is still kind of a charge reservoir, but it also is a high frequency current path. Let me explain what I mean by that. Uh, the active circuitry in here is creating the square wave that's coming out here with some very fast edges. And uh, those edges contain obviously high frequency components. Now we've all heard the adage that current will take the path of least resistance. When we talk about current or at high frequencies, we have to modify that statement a little bit and say that the current is going to take the path of least impedance, which in this case really means least inductance. And the amount of inductance in a current loop is proportional to the loop area. So let's see what that means here. I've got uh, power supply uh, you know, current coming in to power up this chip. That's creating uh, the signal that's going out into this transmission line. So high frequency currents are going down this transmission line through the terminations into the ground plane. And they're going to go through the ground plane and ultimately return back to the power supply. But uh, remember, we're talking about the high frequency currents here, and we want to minimize loop area. And that means that the high frequency currents are actually going to go into the ground plane and follow a path underneath the transmission line, because that will represent the least amount of loop area. It's not going to just go straight across this board, because that means that the current would have a big loop and a lot of inductance. So the high frequency currents are going to follow a path underneath, underneath the transmission line back towards the chip. So how does it get back essentially to the power supply? Well, it actually gets back through this cap. When we had this cap located up over here at the power entry point, that means the current kind of came back through here because that's where the high frequency currents were flowing, but then had to kind of work its way all the way back around and come through here. Uh, so adding a lot more loop area. By placing the high frequency decoupling caps close to the chip, we provide a path for those high frequency currents to get back to the power supply, minimizing the inductance and minimizing the amount of noise generated. So this is really you know, a very big part of the reason why uh, if you look at any of the active devices and ICs on uh, any circuit board, you will see local decoupling caps uh, right here, uh, right here. Uh, you know, there was one actually remo I removed off of the board right there. There's plenty on the on underneath side of this board associated with this chip. Uh, and these are providing that, you know, uh, local storage and high frequency return path for any of the high frequency currents that are demanded by these particular chips. Uh, and this is you know, essentially what we modeled here on my little mock-up board. Okay, so I hope you learned a little something about um, the different roles that uh, the different uh, power supply decoupling and filtering uh, capacitors play on a circuit board and why some of them are placed close to our active devices and some of them are not. If you like what you see, uh, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. And thanks again for watching.